Hey guys, when I was eight, one day afternoon, I fall, fall down from a tree and perhaps broken one of my legs. Unfortunately, it's hurt. Ouch. The first thing crossed my mind was, do I still have capabilities to move my ass to my bedroom as soon as possible? However, I, uh, unfortunately, I failed, of course, miserably. Then I start to think how to explain the whole logic. Why I opened the locked door and climb a tree two miles from our house and lay down here for the whole afternoon to my parents. You know, <laughs> you, did, you did the same things too, right? Definitely. Uh, so, you know, that's a long day and I had enough time to sit down under the tree and think about Something still, I think, today is deep and far, and even touching the e essential of human beings. Okay? Here are the major ideas sprouted from my mind from an eight years young, young man in that afternoon. The first thing is how exactly we weak are as human beings. Look, we can't see far distance, right? We can't run with great speed. We can't jump high or even swim effortlessly. In my desperate situation, I have to uh, figure out a logical, reasonable way to explain or convince my mom in merely four hours before I facing my savage swimming coach who will teach me how to slap my stupid legs tonight in a swimming pool. So you know what? In that situation, I even, in that afternoon, I even noticed that our feeling of nose, the smelling, is not as sharp as most of the mammals because the pigs, cats, dogs can find me, even birds, but I can't smell them. I guess perhaps the urgency and the uh, desperate situation fueled my desire to enhance, to explore how to enhance the capability of human beings. Well, second, Jesus, is there any way or a way to help us figure out the complicated things much easier and to make the right decision quickly? For example, uh, convince a woman like my mom. Forget about that, just kidding. I never succeed. So, um, my dear friends, actually I'm touching, I'm talking about a very fundamental sense of our human being. First, we are not strong. We have to admit, at, at least at most of the time, we are not strong enough, right? Second, we continually face a lot of awkward situations or complicated situations which way beyond our capabilities, right? And as human beings, we strive to, to find out a way to uh, make the decision correctly and quickly. What a pity. You know, in my career, Surprisingly, I find a lot of people facing tons of countless awkward situations just like mine. And my job as a data scientist, oops, I, I forgot to introduce myself officially earlier, I think. Right? Yes, I'm a data scientist. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> You know what? Um, still remember the tree I fall down when I was eight, right? It was a data tree, 
but not an apple tree. Otherwise, I will be a genius physicist like Dr. Xing Tong or Dr. Newton. But now I'm a poor data scientist. But anyway, I, I like my job, and I still think it's very exciting and uh, sexy. We face a lot of difficulty scenarios and uh, helping people. Okay. I firmly believe that the core or spread of my job is, I even wrote down a, a sentence here, okay, to lower the barrels and the costs of decision making. Okay. This is my job's core. You may ask why, right? Because at the most of the time, the barrels and the cost of decision making is high. Right? We always face the situations way beyond our capabilities. You may ask why. Why beyond? Because, as I mentioned, our capabilities at the most time is not high. Right? Let me give you an example. You took chains, right? I believe most of you did. I guess. Oh, oops. Stay there, stay there. Stay there, please. Technology. Technology is always under control, sometimes out of control a little bit. So, uh, by average in China here, each person took at least twice per year, took chains twice, okay? And in this moment, currently, the total length of the railway of the, all of the world is more than one million kilometers right now. Okay. But the sad truth is the chain, the rail, the railway can break or develop the fractures over time. Okay. Just like a scar, just like a scar in our body. Okay. You can see the scars, right? So uh, when the scar developing, it will uh, affect the safety of the, the transportation. So how to, how to uh, stop this flaw? How to fix that? You can see the traditional way to, to fix that is, uh, you can see a lot of sophisticated workers do the inspector tour every day beside the road. The uh, gentle tape, 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 tape the, uh, the rail and try to use their feelings of hearing, try to capture the sound of the rail, okay? Because as I mentioned, the, uh, the flaw, just like a scar in our body, and I can show you a typical flaw developing uh, process, okay? Oh, it's too quick, hold on. So every scar will slowly forming within months or even years, okay? But if there is a crack inside of the rail, when you tape the rail, when you tape the rail, it will show or exhibit a very slight difference from the normal. So now you know how these workers did, right? Their job is to use their air to capture the very slight difference from the, 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 the sound of the rail, okay? So here is another, uh, another example of how the flaw developing, okay? So you can imagine that the traditional way is not accurate nor efficient at all. Why? Because as I, men as, as I mentioned before, even with years of training, the capability of our hearing is not strong enough, right? You can understand, right? Okay. So, um, it's a problem of all of the world, and my team and I use five years to try to find a better solution. So, technically speaking, we use AI and data science to enhance the capability of human beings. You may ask what kind of capabilities we replaced or enhanced. 
Let me tell you, the first is vision. Our eyes, okay? We use camera and uh, computer vision to replace or enhance the eyes capability. We use AI algorithm to check each inch of the real surface. Is there any scar or any scratch on the surface? How big and how deep it is? Okay. The second sense is hapticles, the feeling of touch, like our fingers. Okay. We use laser to enhance the capability, and we keep measure the wear and tear ratio of each inch of rail. Okay. The third, the feeling of hears, hearings, to replace or enhance the ears. Okay. We use ultrasound to directly measure the insider uh, of the rail and check the internal integrity of the railway. Okay. By the way, the, the surface and the uh, touching, the, we use the uh, uh, camera and uh, computer vision and we use lasers they are not related to, not directly related to the inside status or healthy of the uh, railway, but it's some, somehow related to the healthy. Okay? So there are indirect measurements and uh, the ultrasound is direct measurements. And with the timeline, we combine all the feelings, all the uh, uh, checkpoints and all the historical data together, combine them together, and analyze them on the timeline, use time series analysis to figure out what's the real status of each inch of rail and uh, what will happen in the future, right? So please think about the methodology I just introduced. Do you think, do you agree? It's really close to our traditional Chinese medical science. Okay. So back in this day, the advanced body exam, exam examination equipment was lacking. The doctors, the doctors have to had to uh, combine or collect a lot of information from different dimensions, probably related to our health status and put them together, try to make the decision of diagnose, right? And try to approach the reality as closely as possible. Fortunately, now we use AI and the data science to replace it or to enhance it, to make this process automated, right? That's pretty cool, right? So after we know what happened here and what will happen in the future, we have a bunch of data. Now we can do a lot of decision much easier. You know what? We can decide when and how and where we should fix or check, put our eyes on, or even replace the rail. I can tell you it will help us save tons of money, tons of time and enhance the safety issue simultaneously, okay? So in this ecosystem, in this ecosystem, we have different sta stage and we, it, all the equipment has its Chinese name, Bian Chue, Zhongjing, and Hua Tuo. See, they are all very famous doctors, right? We are diagnosed the health of the railway, okay? If we compare, the traditional, the performance from the traditional one to the uh, intelligent one. You can see significant improvement, both on the time consuming, on the cost, and on the uh, safety issue. So actually in my career, in my career, I faced tons of, hundreds of awkward situations, as I mentioned before and try to fix them, try to find a very good solution for them, okay? However, today we only have 15 minutes, right? 
and uh, I cannot bring more details for you today. But you can imagine that. Use AI and data science, there are tons of scenarios you can face. For example, how to check or de 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 detect the uh, underground pipeline system, the machine, the aircraft, the uh, ships, um, the engines, or the body. Okay. So that's why I told you I love my job so deep. Look, actually I didn't talk about how to build a neural network today. I'm not talking about how to write the first code of line, line of the code to, to run a pre-trained AI model today. I'm telling you the raw motivation behind my job and my research the raw motivation behind AI and the data science. It's always serve the human being. It's always serve the decision. It's always try to lower the barrels and the costs of decision making. I'm glad here to share the to topics and the stories with you. And uh, especially a silly idea from a eight years young boy, right? I hope it's close or related to today's theme or topic, evolution. Otherwise, I think Ted will officially ban me from today. Appreciate for your time. I'm Dr. Yang Yu. <laughs>